Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 75 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. One, one of these days I'm going to get into the habit of checking what episode I'm up to, but uh, until then, the podcast will start with an extreme amount of unsurety every fucking episode. Um, oh, I'm just going to be honest with you guys, I had a bit of a shitty week, alright? Uh, I'm, uh, I, I had a very fucking stressful week where... You know, it's one of those weeks where you you worked and you did shit all day, but nothing got done. Do you know what I mean? Like, like you were just doing all of those small tasks, like those small fucking stressful things that you've been putting off, all that data entry shit. Like, oh, dude, you know what I, I've been doing this week, which is the worst fucking thing, and it's, and it's a problem that I didn't even notice was a problem until two years after, and now I have to fucking go through like two... I'll just explain it, alright? So, I have, a, I have a mailing list for that I tell people about shows on. Um, if you want to sign up to it, it's lewspears.com slash gig list, right? One word. Basically, well, it's not really a mailing list because I never send emails. I only send out emails when I'm when a show is on sale, and that's usually like once a year. Um, but basically, you know, it's for pre-sale and all that kind of stuff. So you put your name in, you put your city in and your country. And then every time I'm, I'm about to do a show, uh, I just look up, oh, I'm going to do a show in Brisbane. So I'll email everybody in Brisbane and I'll be like, Hey, you guys get tickets first. Um, and basically that's how most of my tickets get sold these days. So, you know, if you, if you want to know about my shows first and get guaranteed tickets, loosebeers.com slash gig list. But Anyway, so, what is supposed to happen with that is you go on loosebeers.com slash gig list and you put your info in and then it automatically goes and gets saved in my fucking email server thing, right? So I don't have to do anything, it's all automatic. But what I didn't notice is that I actually had... It's all fixed now, by the way, so if you sign up now, this problem won't exist anymore. But I realized that for the past two years, I actually had two different forms on my website on the gig list page. So one of them, if you put your email in the correct one, it would get saved automatically. I wouldn't have to do anything. But if you put your information into the second form, it would get sent to my email, um, which obviously is not saved on the server. It's in my fucking email. So every time I would send out an, an email through my server it wouldn't go to you because it was in my fucking email as just text. And I just realized this like a couple weeks ago and I've gone through to see how many people's names are in my emails and not on my server and it's over a thousand people. Easy. I can't even count it. It's like hundreds of emails and, and within those emails there are like between one to 50 different people, right? So it's it could be 2,000 people that are in my fucking emails and not on my server. So I have to go through manually all of these fucking emails. Go to the name, copy and paste, put it in the name section. Go to the city, copy and paste, put it in the city section. Go to the country, copy and paste, put it again and again and again. It takes like four copy and paste to do one person and there's thousands of them. It's gotten to the point where I'm like, I might as well just fucking pay somebody. Like, pay someone to do this terrible task. Because i got to put it all into a spreadsheet and then upload it to my server and then they'll get the emails. And I need to do it because I'm up, I'm announcing a really big project very fucking soon. So I need to do it in the next... Ah, oh, basically I need to do it this week and it's just the worst task. So I've just been doing all of those fucking stupid little tasks... And I haven't gotten anything done, but I have got a lot done. Like, it's, it's the stuff, it's the thing where you, you get a whole bunch of shit done, but nobody else is going to see it. Which, when you're making comedy and making videos and putting shit out publicly, that means nothing to you guys. Oh, I put out a video! It's like, can't, I've been working. No, you haven't, you've put out a video! It's like, shut up. It's free! <laughs> <laughs> That's what I keep coming back to whenever anybody complains. Oh, you ever put out a video? It's free! Alright? Hit me up when you're fucking, when you're a Patreon, then you can complain. But until then, it's fucking free. <laughs> no, but I've, I've actually been pretty good. I'm going to get a video out um, next week. I'm going to, 
I've got the Heckler compilation coming, which will be next week, and then, uh, uh, in, like, maybe the week after that, I'm gonna finally fucking unveil this massive project that I keep talking about that I can't talk about because, you know what I mean. Anyway, um, yeah, but it's, it's to the point where I haven't really done anything this week, and I don't have anything to talk about on this podcast, so I'm not gonna lie, guys, I have nothing to talk about this week, so if this one's a bit of a bummer, don't blame me, well, actually, yeah, do blame me, I was gonna say don't blame me, blame my website, but I'm the one who built the website, so I'm the fucking idiot that you should blame, so yeah, if you, <laughs> if you don't like this episode, be like, hey, Lewis, that was your fault, I'm like, oh, yeah, fair enough. Uh, but what I did, what I did do this week is, um, uh, hang on, I'm, I'm, I'm at my, I don't know, how, I can't get comfortable, I'm sitting, I'm at my girl's house, she's out at the moment, and she's got this fucking little coffee table, it's the only table in her room, oh, actually there's a table over there, but there's shit all over, I'm just staying here, right, I'm at, I'm at this, you know those, those fucking weird coffee tables that are, they look nice, but they're just at an inconvenient height, but girls like them because they look nice and they compliment the room and they just go with the decor and it's like, yeah, but it's it's a fucking... You just spent like a grand on a table that doesn't work. That's what you did, all right? So I'm, I'm at one of them. I figured that I'd be all right to put the microphone on the table and then I'll sit on the couch. But of course, the couch is too high, the table's too low, the mic is too far away. And combine all of that with how fucking long I am, it just it's just uncomfortable. So I'm currently kneeling on the floor... And it still sucks. I'm gonna, you know, I'm going back to the couch. This. Anyway, so what did I do this week, right? <clears throat> this still sucks, but whatever. My problem, not yours, right? Um, what did I do this week? Oh, that's right. I'd like to officially announce that the podcast Facebook group was a, a mistake. <laughs> it was an absolute error. Uh, last week, I set up a, a, a Facebook group for the podcast listeners um, because the page wasn't working. Like Facebook, you get no fucking engagement on your pages unless you're posting videos or memes. Like, So I figured, what's the best way to actually post stuff about the podcast and that people will see? And it's a group, right? Uh, and I, I blatantly stole the idea from Luke Kidgel because um, it, it was an amazing idea. Because um, he did it for his podcast, and I saw all all of a sudden all these people joined it, started making memes about his podcast, and it was actually, you know, actual people who liked it connecting with each other, which is what Facebook is supposed to be. But now nowadays with the pages and stuff, unless you're posting videos, if you want anybody to see your shit, you've got to have to pay for it. So um, yeah, so I set up a group, and a whole bunch of you guys joined. I think there's like 700 or so people in there, which is pretty cool. Um, which means, by the way, a vast, vast, vast majority of people listening to this did not join the group. <laughs> um, but yeah, I set it up, and immediately, immediately, I just started getting cyberbullied. Everyone was like, oh sweet, finally, a place where we can all collectively get together and just make fun of Lewis for being an idiot. This is great, this is what we wanted all along. And I was like... Here I was, an idiot, I didn't see this coming, I was like, oh, I'll set up a podcast group, I'll be able to post a link every week, and everyone could be like, yeah, go Lewis, you're the best, we love this podcast. Nah, that's not what happened. Everybody just joined in and was like, oh, remember when he thought fucking snow peas were called leaf cocoons? What an idiot! So, that's the whole group, um, and uh, I, I, I'm gonna delete it. <laughs> no, I'm not. Um, there's a, there's a copious, amount, copious amounts of banter in there. Uh, and I'm just getting absolutely demolished. Um, oh, also, I do need to uh, announce the winner of the t-shirt uh, competition. Because I, I did say that somebody who joined the group uh, will win a t-shirt. Uh, I'll do that at the, at the end of this podcast because it's kind of boring. So, um, yeah, but the, the podcast group, if you want to join it, it's it's just literally search on Facebook, Spearhead Sunday's podcast group, and it will come up. Um, otherwise, if you go on the Spearhead Sunday's page, you'll see the link to the group. So, Either way, you'll you'll see it. Um, and yeah, it's you know it's, I'm just scrolling through it now, and it's just filled with memes of people abusing me. So good on you guys, really appreciate. it. Oh, but there is a healthy mix of uh, it, it's like a it's like a 70 30, 70 percent of people are bashing me, and then thirty percent of people are bashing the uh, the blue shirt cunt store. So I'm I'm happy with that to be honest. As long as somebody's bashing that store other than me. I'm happy with, with the group. So if you want to join it, it's Speared Sunday's podcast group. And you can all come fucking abuse me. <laughs> um, Alright. 
Oh, man. Fucking, you know what? I did the dumbest thing. I can't remember if I talked about this or not on an early episode. I think, I'm, I think I might have mentioned what I did, but I've just realized how stupid it was now. Um, if, if you don't know, I've been on an absolute reading storm. I've been fucking, I've been smashing the books, all right? I've been reading, I've been reading everything, okay? I've been reading the fuck out of all these books. In, in the past, I think, three months, I've read ten books. And I'm like, I'm just smashing it. Because I got a Kindle, right? A, a, an e-book reader. And at first I was like, dude, I don't want to read digital books. I like holding the book. I like seeing it on my shelf. But then I realized, hang on, that's just fucking arrogance. That's just me being like, I like it when people come into my room and see all of my books. But in reality, you, 99% of people have a bookshelf in their house and, and fucking... About 10% of those books have been read. I recently threw out all of my books. I just marked down the ones that I've actually read in like my fucking uh, Goodreads book reviewing account, right? And then I, I, I marked down the ones that I wanted to read and then I just took them all to an op shop. And I was like, here, I hope some fucking 80 year old senior citizens can get something out of these books because I am clearly not doing anything with them. Because I would just look at my bookshelf and, and look at all of the shit that I had bought and, and be like, oh, I'm going to read that. And then I would just get overwhelmed because it was like fucking 10 books that I had not read that were there. And then I just downgraded and I got a fucking Kindle, an ebook reader. And it's, dude, it's the best shit ever. It's just one fucking thing and you can fit a thousand books in it and they're super cheap. <laughs> but yeah, I've been, I've been reading all these books and uh, before you think that I'm smart, I remember, I remember one time some guy, some guy was like, uh, oh, I like, I like Lewis. I think he's, I think he's quite, I like listening to Lewis's podcast. I think he has some great insights. Um, and, you know, I can trust him because he reads. It was something like that. It was something along the lines of, ah, oh, he reads, so, you know, he must know a lot. And uh, you obviously don't know the types of books that I read. <laughs> I've just been, I haven't been reading anything intelligent. I've just been reading fucking nerdy science fiction space battle bullshit fucking books that mean nothing and say nothing, but I'm like, oh, cool. He killed an alien. That's awesome. I'm going to read another book where another guy kills a different alien. That's awesome. I've just been reading all the, the Warhammer Black Library books. Uh, and the Horus Heresy is a series that I've been getting into. I'm ten books deep into that uh, in, the, in the past couple of months. Um, but anyway, I'm getting off track. Uh, I, I recently I lost my Kindle, uh, my e-book reader. And I was like, fuck. And I looked everywhere for it. I looked in... In my room, I looked at my girl's room. I was like, you've got it. I know you have it. She's like, I don't have it. I've looked everywhere. I don't have it. So I came out of her house and I fucking looked everywhere. And I was like, all right, you don't have it. And I looked everywhere in my house. And then I was like, fuck. Well, like, and, then I, and then I was like, well, I guess I just don't have a Kindle anymore. And then I, I, I started craving books. I was like, ah, I want to read some shit. Because that's how I've been falling asleep, like regularly is I turn all screens off. And Kindle, it's like digital ink, so there's no backlight in it. Like, you know when you go to bed and then you look at your phone and, and, and it just, it immediately makes you, even no matter how tired you are, if you've been looking at your phone, like the screen for half an hour, you just can't fall asleep. I don't know what it is. It just, it just, I don't know, maybe your brain thinks it's still daylight or some shit. I, I, I don't pretend to know, right? But, the thing was, I've been going to sleep so regularly at like fucking midnight on the dot is because I get into bed uh, at 11 p.m. and I just read for an hour and then I fall asleep. Um, so I've been doing that and uh, and then as soon as I lost the, the fucking Kindle, I started having problems sleeping because I would look at my phone. I'd be like, oh, it's the fucking phone. That's why I can't get to sleep. Which makes sense. I mean, that's why... I don't know, that's that's why you stay up because you go in the bed and then you just check your phone. Oh, I'll just I'll just read uh, my notifications on Twitter and then fucking three hours later you're watching your fiftieth dog video and you haven't fallen asleep and then you wake up the next morning and your whole day is fucked because you haven't slept properly. And then and then another thing is when you wake up in the morning you look at your phone. That's another thing. I reckon I'm gonna get an alarm clock because I've been using my phone 
to wake myself up in the morning. Dude, this is how little I have done this week. You guys don't understand. I've just realized that I've been talking about fucking going to sleep and waking up. <laughs> That's all that I've done this week. All right? I told you. I warned you at the start. But anyway, I reckon I'm going to get an alarm clock. Because... Uh, I, because whenever whenever I wake up in the morning, when I wake up at like 6, right, and the alarm goes off, I get my phone, and I, then I turn off the alarm, but then I start going through Facebook, and sometimes I don't get out of bed until like 7, and it's because I get trapped onto the phone straight away. So instead of, you know, exercising some self-control, I'm just going to enable my fucking behavior and put the phone away. Like I'll, like, But when I go to bed, I'll put the phone on the other side of the room, so that to get it, I have to leave the bed, and then I'm going to get an alarm. Oh, maybe instead of getting an alarm clock, I'll just set the alarm on my phone and put it so that if I want to turn off the alarm, I have to get out of bed. Dude, that's a way better idea. Fuck the alarm clock. I just got a great idea on this podcast. All right. So, long story short, I lost my Kindle. I went, I looked fucking everywhere for it, and I was like, ah, oh, I need this Kindle. So then I, I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to buy a new one. So I go down to JB Hi-Fi, and I have this fucking problem where I just can't, I can't buy the base model. I don't know, I don't know what, I don't know what's wrong with me, but I can't, like if there's, if there's a, if there's a, especially electronic products, right, I can't get the basic one. Like, you know, when you go into the, the fucking blue shirt cunt store and they've got the iPhone, or they've got the iPhone 6, or they've got the iPhone 6S Plus fucking, and then they have the iPhone 6S Plus with the smaller storage, or the iPhone 6S Plus with the fucking way more storage than you need option. I I, I can't, I don't know, it's this, it's this fucking problem with me where I can't just get the base model, the cheap one. I always go all out and I get the best fucking model. Because in my mind, and I know this is wrong, I fucking know this is wrong, but in my mind, if it costs more money, it must be better, I, I, don't, I don't know that's wrong. Every, every time I leave the store, I'm like, dude, I could have saved like $200 and just gotten the fucking basic one that works, but every time when it comes down to it, I'm like, yeah, but the other one costs more, so it must be better. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, I just do that shit every time. So I go to JB Hi-Fi, and I'm like, I'm just going to get the Kindle. Because I had this Kindle for like five years. No, it would have been longer than that, actually. Because I got it for Christmas when I was a teenager. And I was like, Ugh, I don't want to read an e-book. I, I like the feel of real books. Holding the books and sp- turning the pages. And, and, and the weight of the book of me fucking getting halfway... 10 minutes into reading and then going, oh, my arms are tired, I don't want to read it anymore. And then I like, I like how much space it takes up in my room and how much fucking of that fucking ink that, that has to be put onto the page. I love how much that destroys the rainforest. That's what I really enjoy. But then I got over all that shit, I'm like, what am I talking about? Oh yeah, so I had the, <laughs> I had the fucking, uh, the base, basic five-year-old Kindle model. And it's for reading books. You don't need features. You read the book and then you finish the book. That's all you need, right? So I had that for ages. And then I go into JB Hi-Fi. I'm like, I'm just going to buy that. I want the basic one again, all right? Because I've lost it. I don't know where it is. I'll just get the basic one. And then I go in and then I just immediately get transfixed by the new model. Oh, it's got a touch screen. Why do I need a touch screen? It's okay. My other one had buttons. You you finish reading the page, you press the button. This one was instead of a hundred dollars, right? Which is my one. This one was a hundred and eighty. And I was like, oh, but it's got a touch screen. You don't need a touch screen, you fucking idiot. It's a book. It's not. You're not going to be playing any games on it. Um, and and then and then and then, and then, and then there was this other thing like, oh, there's a backlight, dude. The whole f- reason why you wanted a Kindle is because it doesn't have a backlight. And, and, okay, and then I get talking to the guy, and I'm like, hey, what's the difference between the base one and the good one? And, and uh, I don't know why I said the good one, because they're both good. The other one's just a hundred dollars more expensive. 
Anyway, so of course, I buy the fucking $180 one, and I leave, and I'm like, why did I spend $180 on a fucking book reader? I didn't need all of this shit, right? I don't need a backlight, I don't need a fucking touch screen, I just wanted a thing that would put the words on the screen, and I could just read a fucking book. But, anyway, I go home, and, uh... The next day, I and I ended up using the Kindle, and all of the extra features were actually for once worth it, right? I was actually very happy that I spent the money, but I also, but I also totally realized that I didn't need to do that. Do you know what I mean? Like, like, I, like it, like I was really happy with the extra features, but I wasn't a hundred and eighty dollars happy, you know? Like, you're like, oh, it's got a touchscreen, oh, it's got a backlight, so I don't need to have the light on when I read now. I can just have the backlight on, turned on a really little bit, and then it's, I still don't get these sleeping problems that I used to have. This is cool, but it, but it, it didn't make me $180 happy. <clears throat> and then, uh, anyway, so, the, so I get my Kindle, and I'm like, finally, I've got a new one, I can start reading again. I start reading all my fucking nerdy space books, and then the next day... Uh, I'm, I'm booked at the Comics Lounge to do a spot, <clears throat> so I take, uh, I get my camera that I fill my sets with now, and I go to my camera bag, and I put it in the camera bag, and I, oh no, I get the camera bag, and I open up the camera bag, and there's my fucking old Kindle, in the old camera bag, and I'm like, oh sweet, awesome, cool, so I never lost it, it was just in a responsible place, you guys ever do that, where you're like, oh I can't lose this thing, I better put it in a responsible place, and then you forget where the fucking place is because you never normally put stuff in a responsible place. I never used to lose shit and then I started organizing stuff. That's that's what it was, right? I used to I it used to be all of my stuff would just go on the floor. I would just put everything on the floor. My clothes, my fucking laptop, my Everything, the phone, everything just goes on the floor. Comic books, whatever I have, it just goes on the floor. And then when I need it, I'm like, oh, it's probably on the floor somewhere. I look around a little bit, I find it. Oh, here it is, it was on the floor. But then, I, I got the bi-monthly bull set up, and I got a new desk, and I got a green screen, I got the whole fucking nine yards, and I got two, like, film sets in one tiny space. So I'm like, oh, I have to organize my other stuff, because my work stuff is now everywhere. There is no floor. And and the and the moment I started organizing my fucking life like all of those wiki how articles tell you to do, put your shoes in the drawer. So when you need your shoes, open up the drawer, then all your shoes are there. And it's really convenient. Yeah, you know what happens? They don't fit in the fucking drawer. So you open the drawer, and then the drawer's stuck. So you pull, and then you rage, and you start yelling at your fucking shoes. And then your girlfriend goes, I just want to leave, baby. Why are you yelling at shoes? I'm like, because I don't want to put them in the drawer. And then she's like, well, then we need to move out. And then I'm like, I can't afford to move out. I have to keep my fucking shoes here. And they don't come out. And then you just have an argument about shoes. All right? That's what actually happens. And, <laughs> and then... You know, you, you look for your fucking camera gear, and it's in your box, but the box is too small, and there's no... I don't know, maybe I... You know what, come to think of it, I just don't... I, 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 I read the WikiHow article, and, and, the, and, the, and the article will be like, put all of, your, all of your camera gear into a subdivided box, and then I go, ah, I don't need to subdivide it, I'll just put it all into a box, and then it just gets muddled up, because it's all in one place, instead of having fucking compartments. Here's the battery compartment, here's the lens compartment. I just go, eh, put it all in the box! And then I just have, and then I basically just have the same mess that I used to have, but in a smaller, more compacted area that is more difficult to search through. So I've just realized that organization isn't the problem. The problem is I have no fucking patience and I can't follow instructions. I read step one and I'm like, ah, oh, I did that, good enough. That's the real issue. Um, how do we get here? Oh, that's right, I was talking about my Kindle. Yeah, so basically I found my old one, um, and now I have two Kindle. What a boring story. <laughs> I told you I did nothing this week. Alright, what else do we have to talk about? Let me have a look at my fucking dot points here. Oh, yeah, I need to, I need to uh, issue a massive polog apology to Luke Kidgel, because... Um, Last week, I plugged that I was on his podcast. Hang on. <coughs> I was on his podcast, um, and uh, 
I called it Diaries of a White Guy, and that is not what it's called. And that, if dude, if someone did that to me, I would be so cut and offended. Like, dude, you couldn't even look it up. You couldn't even look up the podcast that you were on and write it down and read it properly. Okay, his podcast is actually called Memoirs of a White Guy, not Diaries of a White Guy. You know, I just did the thing where I was, I just started throwing out synonyms because I couldn't properly remember and I couldn't be bothered Googling it. Oh, Memoirs of a, oh, Memoirs, you know, Memoirs, Diary, fucking Diaries of a White Guy. Yeah, that's what I did. I was just like, I can't be bothered looking it up. Fucking uh, Diaries of a Caucasian fucking man. You know, that's what I did. So his podcast is actually called Memoirs of a White Guy. I was on, uh, I, I co-hosted his live podcast, the, the Bird Watching Podcast. Go and look that up. It was a lot of fun. And I'll put the link on my Twitter as well because, you know, chances are I, I said I said it wrong. Uh, no, I actually looked it up. It's Memoirs of a White Guy. My apologies to Luke Kidgel. I'm an idiot, all right? <clears throat> but yeah, go listen to that shit. It's, uh, it was a lot of fun. It's very, you know, interesting. Um, okay, so, I am going to get into miscellaneous bit at the end. I, I know, it's a little bit early. It is a little bit early. This podcast might end up to be a bit of a short one, but I did nothing this week. <clears throat> so I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to lie to you and just start talking about fucking nothing for, for an hour trying to stretch it out, because at the end of the day, it's not a YouTube video, right? I'm not trying to hit the hour mark so I can put another, another few ads in. Realistically, I, I make a loss on the potty, so the shorter the better. <laughs> <laughs> the less, the less, the the smaller the file size, the less it costs me, dude. I'm gonna start doing one second podcast. Could you imagine how that? How no? It'd have to be at least ten seconds. Let's do a ten second podcast right now. Um, let me look up a ten second timer. I'm just gonna do a ten second spearhead Sundays. Ten second timer. All right. Where's the sound? All right. Okay, you ready? <clears throat> uh, no, I want I want sound. You fucking cunt. Uh, here we go. Here we go. All right. Can, okay, that's not. I want. Oh, here we go with sound effects. Is that is this gonna work? Okay, okay, that's what we want. That's what we want. All right, are ready? Okay, so this is the ten second speed on this podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Spirit Sundays. Um, I forgot this. Hey, how fucked the fat people? Dude, I saw this thing that pissed me off the other day. Miss Ladies Bit the End. You're a virgin. There we go. <laughs> there, that was it. That was the 10 second episode of Spirit Sundays. What did I got? I got the intro in there. I got me being angry at someone. I got fat shaming. And then I got me calling a Miss Ladies Bit at the End. Uh, email a virgin. So, you know, that's basically the podcast. Really, you should just listen to that on repeat every fucking week. Um, all right. Now, let's get into uh, miscellaneous bit at the end for real, unfortunately. Okay? We did delay it 10 seconds, but, you know. This is a good email. <clears throat> Subject line. Police showed up at my house thinking I'm a terrorist. Hey, you cunt. How's it going? No need for gay fake names. Just call me Matt. Uh, this story starts off about two or three years ago. I was still in school and it was mid-year break. My dad and I were out on his motorcycle dropping something, dropping something off, of, drop, oh man, dropping something of my brother's, dropping something of my brother's, dude, am I disabled or are you? Drop. Okay, look, the point is, he went to his brother's house. No, his friends... I don't fucking know. Anyway, that doesn't even matter. On the way home... Okay, this, this is where it's... Just forget that even happened, alright? He's on a motorcycle with his dad. Okay. On the way home, we were stopped at the lights in pole position, and I could sense that my dad was going to take off fast when it goes green. The light turns green, and I'm not prepared at all. Three seconds into the launch, I slip off the bike and skid across the road on my back. I was wearing a backpack, but the top part of my ass and the lower part of my back were fucked up. I went to a medical center that night, and they told me to use this cream, and I was fine, but I couldn't walk or sit properly. So, dude, as if your dad didn't warn you. 
Surely that's not a normal like like the G forces of a bike taking off at a normal speed isn't going to throw somebody on their back. Obviously, you're it's your dad, so you'd probably ride on his bike a lot, right? The least he could do is be like, "Hey, son, hold on," rather than, "Ah, uh, well, here we go." And now you're just in hospital. So, you know, fucking father of the year right there. <laughs> um, all right, where are we? <clears throat> uh, you, The hospital's telling you to use cream. You were fine, but I couldn't walk or sit properly. For a few days, I had been, go- I had been getting sales and survey calls. At first, I would ask them nicely to stop calling and take my number off their list, but they didn't listen. So the day after my accident, I'm really pissed off because I had made plans to go out and now I can't. So I'm at home and I see the fucking number ring on the phone and I just fill with rage. I answer and I say, listen here, if you do not take my fucking number out of the system, I will kill three people and fuck a dog, okay? (laughs) Dude, you sound like me, yelling at my shoes because I don't fit in the box. If you don't get in the fucking box, I will kill all of you and every single fucking factory worker that works at Nike. All these ten-year-olds. Um, the, the girl on the phone giggles and hangs up. Um, yeah, it's, it's quite weird getting yelled at on the phone when you work in a call center. Um... Because cause I used to work in call centers. It, it didn't happen very often because I was never an asshole and I never worked in um, like telemarketing or anything. But I remember, I remember there was this one time I worked for Cole's, uh, like delivery. And most of the time it was they would call up and they'd be like, oh, you forgot my eggs. And then you'd refund them their, their egg money because it didn't come, right? Um, but one time there was this dude who, who I, I had only been working there for two weeks. But this guy calls up and... Uh, the whole center just stops. The person on the phone ha- has him on the phone. They mute their microphone. They stand up and they say, I can't remember his name, but they were like, uh, everyone, so you know, Alex is calling. And then everyone just went, oh, and I was like, who the fuck is Alex? And it turned out that uh, this guy, Alex, called once a month at least for two hours and would just abuse anybody he was speaking to. Uh, because they fucked up his Cole's order, right? I don't know, man, he's, he was probably mentally deranged or some shit, but I remember he would just call, and then uh, the person on the phone would be like, Alex, you can't talk to me like that, I'm sorry that we forgot your fucking eggs, but you cannot speak to me like that, okay? And then they would hang up, and then he would call again, and then it was it was hilarious watching it happen, because everyone would just be walk, w- working normally. So most people would be like, hello, welcome to Coles Online, how can I help you? Yep, okay, cool. Hello, welcome to Coles Online. But then every now and then someone would go, hello, welcome to Coles Online. Um, I, like the, the fear that would just shoot into their eyes, because this guy, like I got him once. And and I just I just answered the phone. I was like, "Hello, welcome to Coles. My name's Lewis. How can I listen here, Lewis? You fucking piece of shit. I really, you forgot my fucking name. This is the last time I'm gonna come there. I know where where is your office? Where do you guys work? Let me tell me where you work. I'm gonna fucking come there, and you can apologize to my face." And he would just scream and threaten and yell. And there was this one guy called Wolfgang. <laughs> <laughs> the poor cunt who worked here, and Wolfgang answered the phone one day, and the guy goes, Wolfgang, what are you, a fucking Nazi? You motherfucking Nazi, you hate the Jews, all this kind of shit, and just screamed at him. And then, eventually, we figured out how to turn, because all of our calls were recorded, right, for uh, quality and training assurance purposes. Basically, what that means is, if you fucked up a call, your manager could listen to it, and then be like, yeah, you're fired. But uh, we figured out how to turn the call recording off, and that was when the real fun started. So when Alex would call up, we would turn the recording off, and we would just laugh at him. So he'd be like, you motherfuckers, and we would just piss ourselves, and he would get angrier and angrier and angrier. And um, I'm, I, hope, I, I really do hope that he still does call that center, because that's a fucking legacy to leave behind. Um, anyway, so we're halfway through this email. Oh, no, we're not. So he goes... Uh, all right, so if you don't listen here, if you do not take my fucking number out of the system, I will kill three people and fuck a dog. The next day, I'm lying, I'm lying in bed and I hear loud knocking on the door. I get up and I open the door to two police officers asking for me. <laughs> fuck dog. They tell me how someone at the call center has reported me for terrorist threats. 
This is about the same time as ISIS was just getting big and everyone thought they were going to get blown up. I'm freaking out, thinking the worst, so I explained to them what happened uh, to me on the bike and they understood my situation and let me go with a warning. Hope you thought my story was funny. Keep up the good work. Want to see you live someday. Thank you very much, Matt. Um, yeah, that's... that's Dude, isn't that hilarious, Nat? A fucking company can call you every single day harassing you on the phone and the moment you tell them to fuck off... They're like, oh, you're a terrorist. I mean, granted, you did say you were going to kill them. But no, you just said, if you call me again, I'm going to kill you. So that's fair, you know? That was like, ISIS doesn't do that. Like, ISIS doesn't doesn't call anybody and, and go, listen here, infidels, if you do not immediately submit to the caliphate and Sharia law, we shall bomb you tomorrow. Like, they don't do that. They just fucking explode out of nowhere. I mean, really, you're just a, you're, you're, you're just a terrorist with manners. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you are, man. Um, but yeah, that's hilarious. I mean, we, we should have reported that cunt for terrorism. I didn't know you would actually get a response. We never did anything. We just laughed at him and then hung up and then laughed when somebody else got him on the phone. That was that was our protocol. Um, but yeah, that's ridiculous, man, that they can call you fucking every day. It's it's just stupid. Um, all right, so we got the uh, the second uh, Miss Lays at the end one. I'm sorry this podcast is a little bit short. I just... I just didn't do anything. I mean, <clears throat> I mean, I did a lot of stuff, but I really can't talk about it because it's this fucking project that I'm working on. But I can tell you in the next two weeks, it's going to be revealed. Um, and I think you guys are going to be really excited about it, especially if you're not in Australia. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, look, I'm not going to fucking hint about it, but just know that I'm working on some big shit. And I got, I, I, I haven't stopped videos. Videos will be coming out. It's just, it's just I didn't leave. I really didn't leave the house. I got comic books. Uh, like I do every week, but uh, that's that's really it. And I'm not going to talk about that because it's just fucking boring. I walked up the street, I went into the comic book shop, and then I got some fucking Batman. All right, all right. This is the last uh, last fucking podcast email. The subject line is: I don't like the girl that I'm with. Oh, you! This sucks. This is going to be a sad one. Hi, Lewis. I love the podcast. Keep up the shit work. <laughs> Call me Sam. All right. Sam, yesterday, a girl confessed and told me she liked me. Uh, me, not wanting to make her sad, told her I like her too. Oh, dude, why would you do that? You fucked up. Big mistake. Now we're going out, and I don't know how to tell her I lied. <laughs> what the fuck do I do? I know I dug myself this hole, and I have to get out of it, but any help would be great. Cheers. Oh man, dude, I've got no idea. You, you're an idiot, bro. You, you, you know what you've done? You've just crumbled under the pressure, and it's instead of telling the truth, you were just. I, I want to say you acted polite, but that is not polite. You just acted in the way that you thought would be polite, and you've, because really, what you're gonna? How do you break up? Oh, sorry, I lied. I don't like you. I just didn't want to hurt your feelings. Do you know what that's going to do to the girl? Oh, the, I feel sorry for her, man. Dude, I actually don't know what you should do in this situation. I mean, obviously, you have to break up with her. Um, fuck. I mean, you, you could pull the hole. I'm not... I'm not... I don't know. I'm not ready for... There, dude, okay, straight up. There is no easy way to do this. There is no way that you can do this without really hurting her feelings. Um... And I can guarantee you she will never fucking do this ever again. So you've blown it for, for guys in the future, all right? The moment a woman starts taking control and actually asks a guy out, right? She's never going to do that again. You've just, set, you've just set humanity backwards, man. You've stalled progress. Women are never going to ask out a guy ever again after they he hear this email. And this girl's story. Yeah, I asked him out and he said yes and he was just being polite. <laughs> Um, dude, I don't know. I, I, I think, okay, if it, if it was me, look, what you could do, nah, you can't say that it's her. You cannot, I was going to say what you could do is be like, you go on a couple of dates with her and then you just say, look, I'm, I'm sorry. It's not working. I don't think we're compatible, but that's just going to make her feel shit. I don't think, I don't, you can't make it her fault. Because it's not her fault, but you can't tell her the truth either, because that's just... 
I don't know. I, I don't think you should tell her the truth. I think what you should do is just say that I'm really sorry. I thought I was ready for a relationship, but I, I'm not. Uh, I have a lot of stuff going on in my personal life, but I'm really not. But even then, that's going to devastate her. No, actually, no, I suppose not. I, it, it, you know what? If you've only been dating for a little while, I would I would say I'm not ready for a relationship. I'm really sorry. I have so much stuff going on in my life. I don't think a relationship can work right now. It's not you. It's me. That's what you're going to have to do. So, yeah, I, I, I would pull the whole, I'm not ready for a relationship. I'm focusing on other things. I thought I would have time for you and time to make you happy but I don't want to hurt you any more than, uh, than I am right now by, by pretending that I have space in my life for a relationship of any kind. And then you just stay single for at least a couple months and she'll get over it. And, and don't be her friend afterwards either. Don't fucking friend zone her because that'll just, that'll just kill her because you, because then she'll figure out immediately that you were fucking lying to her as soon as you hook up with another girl. So, yeah, look, you're going to have to... I, I would say... That's... Dude, there's no easy way to go about it. I, I And this is the best thing that I can come up with. Is... I... Is whatever you do, whether you swim, or you fucking write, or you draw, or whatever. Just say... I'm, or, or you're in school, is another one. Say, I'm really focused on school. I'm really focused on what this thing. And I need to make this work. And I'm really sorry. I thought we, me and you would be good but it's taking time away from my number one thing. And because I'm so young, I need to focus on this and I don't want to hurt you by leading you on. I would just, I would just do the whole passion over pussy talk to her and uh, hopefully then she'll be like, oh, well, it doesn't matter how nice I am. I can't compete with his number one thing, whatever it may be. So if you've got a hobby or a skill or you're in school or whatever, I would pull the hole. I'm focusing on this and I don't have time for a relationship. I'm very sorry. Um, and with that, guys, that's the end of the Speared Sundays podcast. I'm sorry this one was a short one. Oh, it wasn't that short. Normally, I go for like 50-something. It's only like 10 minutes shorter than it normally is. So, yeah, sorry that it's a bit short. But um, as I said, I've been working on something big behind the scenes. Um, and uh, I think you guys are going to be really happy for it. Just uh, have a little patience. Next week will be a lot better because I'm actually doing stuff with my life next week. i just got to finish this tedious fucking task and filling out these emails that I really don't want to do. But... Um, yeah, thanks for listening, guys. If you want to join the podcast group, it's uh, search on Facebook, Spearhead Sundays Podcast Group. Uh, also, rate the podcast on iTunes. I have like thousands of listeners and only 300 ratings. It really, really helps if you can just give me five stars, write a quick little review, fill it with fucking in-jokes if you want. I don't care. But yeah, please do uh, rate the podcast. Give me five stars. It helps heaps, and it'll help me get more listeners. And uh, join the group. Um... And that's about it, guys. I'll announce the winner of the t-shirt competition next week, uh, just to give people uh, a little more chance to enter. Um, if you want to win a free t-shirt, join the podcast group, leave your best miscellaneous bit of the end story, uh, can be true or made up, and I'll pick my favorites and I'll send you a t-shirt. Um, if you're not seeing them in, in the group, don't worry, I am reading all of them, it's on, it's on approve only. Um, there's like There's hundreds of stories, I have read all of them, and I have a few favorites at the moment, but if you want to... Um, uh, and, and then I'll just approve the winners. So that way, instead of getting spammed with hundreds of stories, the group will just see the two best ones. So yeah, I'll announce the, the winners of the t-shirt competition next week. Give me five stars on iTunes. Sorry, this was a big fucking outro. I will see you next Sunday. Have a shit one.